Welcome to the first installation of The Artist Sanctuary with Whitney Morrison, where we gain clarity and inspiration um, as we explore the heart, mind, and soul of being an artist. I am your host, Whitney Morrison. And I'm a recent alum of the Ryan Opera Center at the Lyric Opera of Chicago. I am an emerging artist, a music minister, a speaker. Um, what else do I do? Uh, a thought leader, arts advocate, and artist advocate. And I'm here to be your companion um, as we take this journey together to hone our why we do what we do and um, integrate it into our lives. So today's episode, we talk about what is the artist sanctuary? Why am I here? Why am I spending my time doing this? Um, what you can expect. And um, we'll have a bit of a mini episode where we kind of work through a topic. And um, then we talk about why you want to be here. So um, let's get into it. Um, but first, let us pray. And if you don't pray, that's okay, because I will. For thou hast made us for thyself, and our heart is restless until it repose in thee. Amen. That is from the Confessions of St. Augustine of Hippo. Um, so a few points of distinction. We're going to start out right from the beginning, being open, being genuine, being honest. Now, I have given myself permission to be unapologetically black, unapologetically uh, churchy, unapologetically spiritual. That's who I am. But I also am allowing myself to be um, deeply and universally artistic and uh, philosophical because that is also who I am. And um, it's kind of interesting because in the world, those things seem to be held in attention, um, which um, tempts me to not show up with all of those things because I don't know if people can handle it. But since I am creating this space and starting from scratch, I said, you know, there's no tension in that for me. I just show up and I be myself. So, um, why not make the space for me? Um, but as an, as the other part of the aside, there's this kind of theological, um, implication to that. Because especially with what's going on in the world today, um, those of us who believe in God, we are struggling sometimes to figure out, okay, how is God both merciful and just? You know what I mean? These things that seem like they exist in attention in the world. And I wonder, as we are consistently, um, those of us who do that, trying to, I guess, maybe remember God, put God back together. I don't know, sometimes with tape or, you know, glue or... <laughs> or whatever we can, we can muster up. Um, it's interesting to think about what if God just shows up and says, this is who I am. This is how this works. And we go from there as opposed to going from the parts. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to you all, but that's something I've been thinking about. And I wonder what the implications of that are. That's it. So I see this kind of like my home on the internet, like my little corner of the internet. And so, um, I'm welcoming you all into my space. And so um, no matter how you identify, if you identify um, with being unapologetic or black or, you know, churchy or spiritual or deep, uh, what else did I have in there? Um, artistic, uh, philosophical. If any of that describes you, then this is the place for you. So grab you some tea or a blanket uh, and or a blanket if you're not watching this Oh, or if you're not playing this while you're doing something else, AKA driving, um, grab all of that stuff and a comfortable seat and let's get started. Okay. So what is the artist sanctuary? Um, am I trying to bring y'all to church every time? Not exactly, but it is a double or triple entendre, if you will. Um, and one, uh, definition of sanctuary, I hope this will be, or that, uh, we're creating this space to be is, kind of like the ecclesiastical setting where we come into a place, right? And um, and it functions as a place where we engage the ideals and values that we hold most dear and that we engage them either alone or with community. Um, 
and that we can find community there and that we can really um, work through things that are important for us and figure out how to walk them out. And so um, that's what I want this space to be for artists. And not that your ideals or your values have to be mine. That's not what this is about. But whatever your ideals and whatever your values are, I am hoping that we can work together to align that with how, um, how you live your life because I think that's really important. Um, somebody said that that's integrity, that your, uh, values align with what you do. That's integrity. So anyway, uh, but there's another meaning of sanctuary, meaning number two, and it's like what you find in nature, right? Um, a nature reserve for uh, birds or butterflies. And so the idea is that, um, there's a space for us, space. Space for us to think and um, and where there's provision. Um, it is my intention to bring really great content, really uh, thought provoking um, things that we can chew on. So there's some some sense of provision here um, and where we can thrive. That this place is designed for artists, for creative people, um, and we have the opportunity to thrive and grow here. So. Um, that's the second meaning. And then there's a third meaning that is kind of new to me. And that's, um, harkens back to the, um, points of distinction earlier, but this idea that it's a sanctuary for me, gosh, doggone it. You know, (laughs) um, like I said, talking about that, that tension and, um, the identities that seem most prevalent in my life, I rarely have spaces um, outside of the ones I create very intentionally where I can, um, where I feel comfortable being my full self. That's something I'm working on. So, um, a shout out to Mike Todd. Uh, this is a hot moment, a uh, humble, open and transparent, I think is what he calls it. But yeah, and I'm still struggling. Like it was just yesterday I decided, yeah, Whitney, it's probably a good idea for you to be your whole self. And I had friends that needed to give me permission, like Whitney, it's okay. So, <laughs> Um, so if you think I'm on the right path like this, let me know that you're saying, okay, Whitney, yes, that's a good idea. If you're going to create a space on the internet, you should probably create it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you want me to delve more into what that's all about and, um, how as a black woman, that's a, that's a thing that I don't think is only mine. Um, leave a comment. Let me know if that's something that you, that you would like to see an episode on. I figure if we're talking to these, these larger companies that we interface with asking for diversity and inclusion, I might as well include myself. How about that? (laughs) So, um, that's what the artist sanctuary is. Okay. Um, but why though? Um, Anybody who's an opera singer listening, there is so much that we have to do, even during this pandemic, um, you know, languages and studying and all of that. So why am I spending my time talking to a camera? Well, let's see. Um, This is who I am, y'all. Um, a companion to other artists and other people who, who need a friend, who need a peer to kind of walk step in step with them. This is something I've been doing for a really long time. And, um, it is something that I found a lot of value in for myself and my friends and colleagues that I've always, um, encouraged and always, um, been able to have these conversations with, they consistently tell me how much value it adds to their life. And so I say, you know what? I think, especially during this time, during, during the pandemic and, you know, so many people in school and, you know, having to figure out a whole lot, what better time is there to explore the why we do what we do? Because it is during this time, times of adversity, um, especially with people going through school, artists going through school and, um, and kind of just dropping, <laughs> you know, it's like you're in school and you have all of this support and then it's just like, uh, nothing. And some people are, you know, lucky enough to get it straight into jobs and into young artist programs, but I wasn't like that and everyone isn't. And so if I can do one thing to kind of, um, help spur someone on and help, uh, encourage them and support them in this time, I think, um, I think that's something I need to be doing. Another reason why I'm doing this is for my peers. I've seen in school where there were people that were immensely talented, um, but they didn't know it. And 
the difficulties of this path kind of snuffed them out in a way um, that has always been hard for me to see because I always tell my people, people are doing more with less. Hello, more with less. Um, But there is, there's another component because there was an inner work that at times people struggle to, to, um, to get the capacity to handle the volatility of an artistic path. And so it's my passion to be here as someone who can, um, who can walk with my fellow artists and, um, help to encourage us to, to move forward. Um, also I need this. Okay. Um, This is a part of my life. And so, you know, really going through thoughts and um, being aware of my my heart, mind and soul in a in a way that informs my artistry. It is very important to me. And so this is like another opportunity for me to get more resources and to create community. I mean, I'm here to do this with you. And so I'm excited to see what you all think. And, um, if you think I'm right, if you think I'm wrong, if whatever, um, perspectives you bring to these topics, um, I'm so excited to, um, get to see who else is out there and to get to learn, um, get to, get to know other artists who are opera artists or who are different artists. I mean, this is for people in creative paths. So I'm excited to, to build community. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's the why. And so, um, for the episodes without all of the middle part about the, the, the why and what this is, we'll have the introduction in the beginning of the, uh, the podcast, um, some sort of a prayer or, or meditation reflection. And, um, and then we'll get into a quote or the topic of the day. And so today we have a quote from Bishop T.D. Jakes and, um, I encountered this, I don't even know, listening to sermons is something, that's something I do um, regularly for like my worship time in the morning or whatever. But when he said this, I said, hold the phone. Okay, so the quote, very simple. You are a human being, not a human doing. You are a human being and not a human doing. And I said, wait a minute. And the reason why it hit me or it struck me so is because we're part of a society that when you meet somebody, you say, what do you do? You know? And it's just like, oh, and so there's this identity in what do you do? Like if I ask you who you are, if I ask me who I am, we start to talk about what it is that we do. Y'all, I take in a lot of different things. So um, I remember listening to one of Oprah's Super Soul Sundays. And, um, one of the speakers there was talking about, you know, your thoughts in your head are not you. The awareness of the thoughts is you. And I know that's deep. That's for another conversation. If you want that to be part of the podcast, again, comment, let me know what things uh, interest you. This came into my life way after, um, this event I'm going to tell you about. So I was in Rochester. That's where I did my master's and uh, some friends and I went to see a show as a Christian artist. Um, and one of my mentors and former teachers, uh, Dr. Wayne Buckner, uh, he's, um, a piano professor at Oakwood university. That's where I went to. That's where I studied. And, um, so we really enjoyed the, the program. One of my friends said that that was her first concert. So it's just like, Oh, okay, girl. Well, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I could get these free tickets. Amen. Okay. Um, so, um, we go to the, to the concert and afterward, um, he invites us to the bus and we hang out with him and, um, and his friends. And I go on, thank you so much. Thank you so much for investing in my gift. Thank you so much for being there to, to, you know, help my gift along and all of that. It was my gift my gift, my gift. That's what I used to talk about a lot. And he stopped me. He said, well, Whitney, We're here to support you. I mean, we like what you do, but we're here to support you. We like you. You, you're intelligent. You're, you're funny. You are, 
you know, so many other things. I'm here to support you. And I don't know if I cried at that moment, but there had been so much attention toward me because of what I could do. I didn't think anybody really saw who I was and I didn't really give any thought to it. To me, it was about, it was all in service of this gift. Um, And then his friend came along and he said, yeah, you have to be something more than what you do. And I said, hmm. He said, take my mother, for example. Her gifting was hospitality. And when she could no longer do that, she died. And he also told me um, about his dad. I can't remember what his dad did. I don't know if he was a business person or was he a doctor? I can't remember what it was. But whatever his vocation, um, he did it. And then when he couldn't anymore, he died. And that struck me so hard um, at that time in my life. Because if I'm being really honest, and some people who know me um, wouldn't know this, but at that point, it was almost as if singing and being an artist was ruining my life a little bit um, because it was so heavy. I didn't know how to relate to this big, awesome thing that everybody saw it was that I was doing. Um, and I didn't know how to reconcile that with my everyday personal life. It's kind of like, even now I sing uh, the Hannah Montana song, get the best of both worlds because I'm, I'm a very down to earth person. Um, and people sometimes say they don't even recognize me when I'm on stage because it's like, I'm a different person, but somehow just trying to deal with all of that and relate to it was so difficult. It was so difficult. Um, along with all the other trials with that come with being in college and being away from home. And anyway, um, and I say that to say it's, there are different ways that we can have like these um, dysfunctional relationships with what we do. And at least in my case, and maybe it's not for you. Um, but like this, oh, this uh, dispossession of it, kind of what I was doing, kind of, I am no one and it is this, but I must take care of it even though I am no one, you know, that kind of thing, this dissociation. And then there's the over identifying where this gift is me and Anything anybody says about what I do is a direct reflection on who I am. And especially as singers, it's so hard because our voices are, you know, part of our identity. And so it's really hard to kind of strike that balance. Um, But my friend says, uh, my friend Erica Gabriel, shout out to her. Amazing, amazing artist. She, She would tell me that it's too heavy for you to feel like the criticism and the praise is all for you. She's like, it's not designed for you. You know, you're not meant to carry that. And I heard one person say, uh, compliments are like perfume. You're supposed to, uh, you're supposed to spray it and not drink it. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, you don't drink it cause it could be poison. Right. So, um, so I'm, Okay, I'm getting back to my notes because I'm a little, I'm a little off. Okay, uh, but yeah, there can be no art without you. You can't. So, oh, that's what I wanted to do then. The like a plant, right? We want fruit from a plant. Typically, we want either flowers or fruit. Think about gardening. You, know, you want a tomato from a plant. You want a pepper from a plant. But it all starts from a seed. You have to allow that seed to get roots. And the only way that the plant is able to thrive is that it gets roots, right? And this work of being <laughs> and um, and being mindful about why we do things and the intention behind things is a lot like roots for me. Um, because, and by the way, a plant only is, right? It only stretches and reaches and bursts and stretches and reaches, but it never really is anything different. Just like the plant the, and the fruit is the byproduct of the plant or is it, it is something that is produced by the plant. So is our art that the, the, we as the plants have to grow, 
right? And we are able to produce things that people like. But there's a whole process and there's a whole system that people will never see unless they pluck it up um, where the plant gets all of its nutrients. And this kind of work is, is, is what I found has, has nourished me a lot on my artistic journey. And, um, a lot of my friends and a lot of the people I follow there, there is definitely that, uh, theme running throughout, um, their lives and their artistic work. Um, and the value I found in my own life is allows me to live more fully being before I do. <laughs> it allows me to just take a breath and say, okay. I can live and that is a part of my art. You know what I mean? Like uh, the famous gospel singer, Kirk Franklin. GP, are you with me? <laughs> uh, he, he was doing an interview and he said, you know, the one thing I have, you know, the one issue I have with these record labels is that they want a record back to back to back to back. And he's like, well, I haven't lived enough life to produce something yet. And, you know, like I need time to live. And so realizing that, um, that I'm someone of value, um, outside of what I do allows me to live and to know that that can inform what I do, but it doesn't have to be what I am. Um, it gives me some distance and breathing room between, like I said, um, the critiques and the praise, um, Helps me to not be so neurotic. I mean, just when you are kind of obsessed with this thing you must take care of and you must be perfect and you must be excellent and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's just too much. It's drama, okay? Honestly, I don't know if it's age. But I don't have time for that anymore. <laughs> like, I don't have the energy for that, honey. Um, and it allows for me when I think about being first and really nourishing who I am, um, before I think about what it is that I do, um, it allows me to build a kind of resilience for the, um, the volatility of, you know, life, but then of being an artist, like there's some, you, one day you in, one day you out, one day you the person's favorite, the next day you don't, you on a list, you know what I mean? And it's just like, nobody can live like that. If you live in for, uh, you know, the praise or, you know, dying by the critique or, you know, or, you know, you got to do this thing, you know, you, you having your whole life hinge on some little folds in your throat or some ability of your hand or, you know, or even of the function, a particular function of your brain. We are so delicate. And so anytime we get a chance to be full, um, I just feel like it's my responsibility to be a whole human, <laughs> you know, a whole human. Um, so, I just want to talk a little bit about how I got into doing this or like what brings me to this type of thought, right? Um, I realized that most of my influences in singing were not singing, <laughs> were not the typical art things, but they were ideas and things that people would say. And I'm just like, yo, that's deep. And I would just mull, mull it over and it would really inform what I did. And growing up in the black church, I mean, we were, we were told that all the time. And I don't know if, why it just hit me, but like your gift will make room for you. Like this idea that, that the gift goes before you, but it is making room for you. Like you are the thing that needs to be there. Right. Um, but also that who you are and what you do outside of the thing you do matters because it informs it. You, you know, um, one of my favorite preachers, Andy Stanley, everybody know me. I'm always talking about Andy Stanley because that's my boy. Um, but he says a wise man knows that all of life is connected. And so who we are and what we do, um, matters. It matters. And so in, a, in the black church, especially we were like, okay, you need to go back and get some more anointing. You need to be praying. When we had gospel choir concerts, we fasted. Like there was something about your lifestyle that mattered to what you did. And so when I went to school, um, and all throughout, you know, performing as a young person, I, people just had these really strong reactions to what I was doing. And I was just like, 
I mean, was it all that? I mean, I was just up there. I'm just up there trying it. Um, but it would be these really strong reactions. And I remember my uh, teacher saying, well, this is available to all of you. We're in, um, studio class. She said, this is available to all of you. And I said, ah, I was like, I didn't think I was doing anything special, but it's a good idea to think that when we see something that is moving, that we realize that it is available to us because we all can do that, that work to bring something special and something particularly us to it. Um, and so during school, I began to start like learning about other people's paths, like, um, just artists in general, Marian Anderson, Renee Fleming, Joyce DiDonato, um, J.S. Bach, Tyler Perry, Vincent Van Gogh, Denzel Washington, Jill Scott, Elizabeth Warren. Like these are people that (laughs) inspire me. And I started to see a common thread in, in what they would say about their art, that it was from a place of love. And I would see this, this resilience and this wholeheartedness And anybody. I know I'm shouting out a lot of people, but y'all I take yeah, a lot of stuff. I, it's not until I'm talking to other people and I'm like, yeah, somebody else said this and somebody else said that. Well, I'm talking about somebody else now, Brene Brown. Um, she talks about this wholehearted living and I just recognized that the, that the artists I was most drawn to were able to express themselves as that wholeheartedness with a, with an openness, with a vulnerability and with an awareness of who they are and what it was that they were doing. Um, and so I think this work is so important because in my own life, I've seen, I've had many different ranges of, of performances, you know, from average to excellent or to excellent, to care about, (laughs) care about to moving and moving to life changing. And I find that the kind of upward mobility of those, or not upward mobility, that's not what I mean. Um, the increase in those, um, values and in those reactions, um, was, directly related to how much I engaged myself in this way. Um, and I remember listening to a YouTube video and I don't know if I can add it here or not, but I'm gonna just say it in case, in case we get fancy. Um, there's this, um, okay. There's this, my producer's telling me I got five minutes y'all. I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, so Michael Jr. He's a, he's a comedian and he has this teacher, um, this singing teacher to sing Amazing Grace. And he just sings it kind of off the cuff. And then he tells him, he gives him this whole prompt that, you know, somebody is dying and I can't even remember what it is, but this kind of emotional, um, uh, prompt. And then he sings it with all of this, you know, color and all of this ornamentation and the crowd is like, Yes. And to me, that's the difference um, between just doing and doing with intention and really knowing what your why is. And so um, I have a dream (laughs) that we can be amazing artists and colleagues and community, community members and family members all in the same person. And I can't say that I'm 100% there, but I do know that um, I'm on my way. And I want you all to join me on this journey. <laughs> I want you all to join me. I think um, I think we can learn a lot from each other. And I am not positioning myself as one that has arrived. I am sharing what I found helpful in my life and the things that have brought me value. But as a as a, as a companion, as a facilitator, and as a contributor, but not as, as any type of expert, um, as you'll see. And, um, but not and, um, but I think this is valuable, um, this kind of discourse. And so I ask you to join me on this on this journey at the Artist Sanctuary with Whitney Morrison. So if you are interested in going one more leg of the journey, please subscribe um, and join us for the next installment. And uh, before we go, I'd like to end with a bit of a um, benediction, if you will, in the form of, in the form, a benediction in the form of uh, an affirmation. 
Uh, and you can say it after me or, you know, rewind it and say it with me, whatever. <laughs> Why would you rewind it? Anyway, may we live in wholeness. May we give from fullness. May we create from passion. Amen. See you next time on the Artist Sanctuary with Whitney Morrison. Peace, y'all.